Hello, people of the internet. 2014M here, and welcome back to the storybook. Um, today, um, we're going to be reading Chapter 1 of Legend of the Ghost Dog. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the prologue. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. <clears throat> Chapter 1. So there I was, at the end of the Earth. Well, maybe not the very end. Alaska was closer to the top of the planet than I'd ever been, but it wasn't exactly the North Pole, and Nome was more isolated than any place I'd ever lived, but it was still a city. This place stinks, my little brother, Jack, was yelling. We might as well be on the moon. I'd love to live on the moon, I told him. Nice and quiet, plenty of open space, no neighbors, and a great view of the Earth. Sounds perfect to me. Yeah, Jack reported, yeah, Jack retorted, stabbing a finger in my direction accusingly. Because you're a nut job. At the at the age of eight, Jack considered himself an expert in what was crazy and what was not. He made no secret of his belief that I was far from normal and I might as well have come from, well, the moon. And I didn't mind. There were lots of things I'd like to be in life, but normal had never been one of them. Dad sent me here Dad sent me in here to make sure you were getting unpacked, I said. Jack grabbed a beat up looking suitcase near the near his feet, unzipped it, and hoisted it into the air. The contents spilled out all over the floor of his new bedroom in our dad's cabin. Done, he said. If you say so, I said, backing out of the door. In my own room, everything was already neatly put away. We were only supposed to be here for two weeks, but I'd brought a good selection of books and all my warmest hiking clothes. The cabin our dad had rented was just outside of Nome. The view from my window showed an unending sea of wavy hills, not with not another house in sight. I thought the place was great. Jack, on the other hand, believed we had been cruelly plopped into the center of a vast and uncivilized wilderness. Jack and I had a week off for spring break, but we were missing an extra week of school, too, since our mother was in Japan handling some corporate me meager thing. The four of us couldn't go as a family to Japan and Nome and to Nome at the same time. So Jack and I ended up with Dad and Mom went to Japan on her own. We'd all be back together in upstate New York soon. In the meantime, Jack liked the idea of missing an extra week of school and doing his classwork via computer. But that wasn't but that was the only thing he was happy about. He had been expressing his outrage pretty much non-stop since our arrival the day before. I was supposed to be keeping an eye on him, but I was also itching to go out and explore those hills. What do you say, Henry? Are you up for a walk? My beagle was asleep at the foot of my bed. He opened his eyes at the sound of my voice and gave a weary look, heaving a big sigh at the word walk. Henry's world revolved around three things, food, affection, and sleep. But once he got outside, he loved to roam as much as I did. I made a quick trip down the hall to let my dad know I was heading out. My father was in the tiny third room that was doubling as his bedroom and office. He was typing on his laptop when I walked in, his shaggy black and gray hair standing every which way on his head. He looked up and smiled over the top of his reading glasses when I came in. I made a mental note that he was looking a bit on the thin side when he started writing a new book he often forgot to eat. I'd get some kind of new some kind of stew going for dinner, preferably full of sausage and vegetables. Mom had given me a longer than usual lecture on the phone about how I was the only one who had to take care of Dad and Jack because they'd never do it themselves. How's it going, sweet tea? my dad asked. Everyone calls me tea because I hated my full name, which is Atinya. Atia Atinya, sorry. My father used variations from sweet tea to hot tea to iced tea, depending on my mood, or his. I'm good, I said. The prisoner in the cell block, J, may be plotting some kind of rebellion, though. I considered myself I'll, I consider myself warned, my father said. I was afraid Jack wouldn't like it here. I just didn't feel like I had a choice. I can't write this book without being here to research and re interview people, really live, live it for a while. And the firm made it pretty clear they needed your mom to be in Japan. You know, it was either Alaska, Japan, or sticking you with your grandparents. Believe me, you made the right choice, I said. 
Jack will live, and I love it already. I was going to take Henry out for a walk. Is that okay? Great idea, Dad replied. D just don't go too far. The realtor said it's easy to get turned around out there. If you get lost, you can, can't exactly pull over and ask for directions. I'll be careful, I promised. Don't worry, and I'll be back in time to get something for dinner. My father smacked his head with his hand. I almost forgot. Joe, the guy who's going to be my research assistant, is stopping by tonight to introduce himself. I thought maybe we should ask him to stay for dinner. No problem, I said. I'll make enough for four. Five, my father corrected. He's going to have his daughter along with him. Oh, I said. Okay, five then. Will she eat stew, do you think? Do you know how old she is? No idea, he said. I think he said she's in the seventh grade, whatever that means. My father was a real space cadet sometimes. I tried not to take it personally. Well, I'm in the seventh grade, I reminded him patiently, and I'm twelve, so she's probably around my age. He looked really surprised for a moment, like I'd just solved the riddle of the Sphinx or something. Huh, I thought you'd be young I thought she'd be younger. Well, good. You'll have somebody to hang out with then, he said. Then he started typing again, which meant he was pretty much lost to the rest of the world for the next hour, or four. I headed back to my room for hiking boots and a coat. I wasn't happy to hear that my dad's assistant would be bringing his daughter. Unlike Jack, I didn't want to have someone to hang out with. I was kind of picky about my friends. I was into reading and hiking, and the way so many girls in my grade seems to be into clothes and celeb gossip. I had been looking forward to some quiet time in Alaska, and the last thing I wanted to do was make small talk over dinner with some bubblehead. But I didn't have to worry about that right now. Henry perked up when he saw my me lacing my boots. I layered up a few t-shirts, then zipped myself into my thick, um, patoga jacket, guaranteed to stay toasty even in, a, in a Antarctica, though I was glad I wasn't going to have the chance to test that theory. Alaska in April was pretty cold enough. Okay, buddy, let's go, I said to Han Henry, dangling his leash in the air. Henry hopped off my bed and took his time, indulging in this in a slow stretch, his front paws pressed into the floor and his butt extending skyward in a picture-perfect downward-facing dog. He yawned and shook himself, then sat in front of me expectantly, his huge velvety ears framing his face. Henry didn't fetch and had a weakness for digging through garbage cans and was useless as a watchdog, but my beagle was hands down one of the most adorable-looking animals ever to grace the planet. I knelt down and hugged him, enjoying the little blast of beagle breath he sent my way as he s snuffled my face, then clipped the leash then clipped the leash to his collar. Once we were through the front door, Henry stopped to sniff the air. There was open space in every direction and the hills and woods off in the distance. The sky seemed so vast and almost made me dizzy to look up at it. I was complete it was com I was in completely unknown territory. Which way should I go? Henry started pulling me to the left. I saw that his nose had already located a worn path, leading up a series of small hills. Taking a deep breath of brisk, fresh air, I followed Henry's lead. One day in Alaska, off into the unknown. And that's where it ends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Chapter 1. Um, I should be back tomorrow with Chapter 2, but if I'm not, please don't hate me. Um... And so that'll be it for this video. Please remember to comment down below in the comments what book you would like me to read next. And so that's it for this video. Bye, guys. Keep reading.